Hey guys, I'm Matt Asplund and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, what we're we'll going over is how to make a level sequence play in any location in your level and also across multiple levels. So ordinarily you're quite restricted with a level sequence in the fact that where you make it is where it has to play and if you want to then move this somewhere else, you can't. Or if you want to have this same level sequence be dynamically played anywhere in the level, for example wherever your player is, you can't do that without recreating the level sequence. However, what I'm going to go over today is making it so you can do that. You don't have to recreate it. You can use that same level sequence anywhere you want. So let me show you what it is we're going to create today. So as you can see, I have this level sequence here where it's simply just a camera coming down and doing a little something with the idea of the player being in the middle here. So the camera is going around the player. If I were to enter the game and hit play, I'm not going to move. This is where I created level sequence. I'll press one and we're going to see the camera is going to come down do all this stuff around the player it's not going to look great it's just something i very quickly whipped up just for the purpose of the tutorial but you can see that the camera is kind of going around the player like this in this location around the player this is where i created the level sequence this is where it is however if i were to just walk over here change my location change my rotation press one again you can see we have the exact same level sequence except now it is over here with a different location and a different rotation as well and i didn't have to recreate it it is automatically dynamically moved it over there. So as you can see, that is going to work perfectly for us. So this is what we're going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how we've done this. So what we're going to want to do first is we obviously want to create our level sequence. I'm not going to be going over that today as I assume you already have one. But if you don't, what you can do is up the top here, you have the kind of cinematic clapperboard. You can click on that add a level sequence, save it wherever you want. And then once it's open, you can then create your level sequence in here. Again, I've simply just got a camera moving about like so, but you can do anything you want. You can do this with cameras, with you know actors within your level, cubes, anything that you want. You just wanna make sure that you add it into the level sequence specifically. And once you then have your level sequence, we don't need to do anything else in here. We don't have to do anything special to the level sequence, which again is why I'm not going over it. But once you've got it created, we want to open up our character blueprint or wherever it is you want to fire off the code for your level sequence from. But for me, the character blueprint makes sense. Now, obviously, ordinarily, you have to do a level sequence in a level blueprint. We don't today, so you can pick any blueprint that you want. Again, I'm doing the character blueprint. So for me, that's content, third person, blueprints, BP, third person character. And in here, what I'm going to do is find some empty space in my event graph, right click and get the one keyboard event just so for the purpose of the tutorial I want to press one to then run this code what we're going to do after this is out of pressed or if you're using enhanced input actions you want to come out of started and we're going to get a create level sequence player the level sequence is going to be the one we just made which for me is ls player intro and then you can change the settings in here as well if you want however we don't need to this is just the settings of the level sequence if you want to modify and change those as well. Coming out of out actor now of create level sequence player, we're going to set override instance data. And this here is what is going to allow us to actually modify the location and rotation and even scale of our level sequence. So we're going to connect that into there and then tick that we are overriding the instance data. Then out actor, we're once again going to come out of that and get default instance data so we're going to get the default data of this so we're going to get the data of it that we want to modify and then out of this we're going to cast to and we're going to do default level sequence instance data don't do anything custom for you for what you've created it is going to always be default level sequence instance data connecting that in there and then out of this as default level sequence instance data we're going to set transform origin and this here is actually going to modify the transform of our level sequence so setting override instance data to true means that it's going to use this transform origin and a transform origin is where it's going to then be in the level so we can right click this split the structure pin and then i'm going to right click the location and split the structure pin of that again as what I want to do is just do this where the player is. Now you can do this wherever you want. You can place this in a level wherever, but for me, I'm doing it where the player is. So I'm going to right click and get actor location as I am in the player character blueprint. 
I'm going to right click the return value, split the structure pin. Return value X goes into transform origin location X and Y does the same. And then Z, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to come out of the Z and I want to get a subtract node. I'm then going to subtract 92 from this before putting it back into the Z. And the reason for that is because the character blueprint is 92 units up above the floor. For example, if I were to drag in my character, you can see the Z is, well, it's actually 90, not 92. So it's a good job I did test that. So you can see it's 90 above, which means when we spawn in the level sequence, it's going to actually be in the middle here, whereas I want it to spawn at the bottom as that is where I've created it from. So you're going to want to make sure you do that as well. So we're going to open this back up and actually change this to 90, not 92. And then the rotation is going to simply just be get actor rotation. I don't need to do anything special with that. And that is now going to move our level sequence to where the player currently is. So to play it, we can then come out of return value of the create level sequence player and then just get play like you normally would. Connecting that into there. And I'll even double click this to get some root nodes to keep it looking nice and organized. And it is as easy and simple as that. We can compile and then we'll hit play and we can see this working in action. So again, I'm not going to move the rotation or location of the player. This is where I created the level sequence. You can see that if I press one, it's going to play the level sequence perfectly where it should be. This is where I first created it, but obviously it's also doing it where the player currently is anyway, but this is where I created it for the first time. Once we get through this, I probably shouldn't have made it as long as I did, but once we finish this, we can then move anywhere we want. Let's move over here this time, move the location and the rotation of the player, press one again, and you can see we've now spawned in that same level sequence, the exact same thing, but just in a different location and rotation in the map where the player is. Now, obviously I went through the wall there because it's a bit too close to so that something you're also going to need to be careful of as well, but you can see we're playing the level sequence anywhere in the level that we want. Now, one thing you're going to want to be careful of is I've always found the best way to do this is to create this at zero, zero, zero. So if we open up the level sequence, you can see that I'm basing it around where the player would be here. And this is zero, zero, 92. So this is at zero, zero, zero location, which is why it works best for me, because it's going to obviously offset it based on where it's spawned in. So if you have it spawned in at zero, 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 that is going to have the best offset. Now, if you have built it somewhere else already because you started watching this video after level sequence, which I assume a lot of people probably did, don't worry as what you can do is just go onto each individual component that you've got in the level sequence, go to transform, add the section here, and then add a relative track, add the relative track in here, and then in the transform of this and location, just add in the offset. So for example, if you have this at a thousand on the X, you'd add in to the X minus a thousand to move it over a thousand units so it's back at zero i hope that all makes sense that is then how you can get it reset back to zero because you do need it to be at zero so the best way to do it is to build it at zero but if you've already built it beforehand you can just move it over using this as well so let me just delete that and then i think that will be it for this video we've done everything we've wanted to do what we've done is we've set up a system in which we can go anywhere in our level at any location any rotation whatever we want and then spawn in the exact same level sequence which we can use anywhere in the level it's going to play perfectly for how we want no matter where we are or where we're facing and this also works in different levels as well as you're creating that level sequence in the blueprint so thanks so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did, please do make sure to like and subscribe down below as it really does help me and the channel out a lot. So thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you all in the next one.